coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen. Archer gains Part 135 Air Carrier and Operator Certificate. Harbor Air begins e-plane conversion program with Bel Air Aviation. And Starship's fourth test beats expectations. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen Program, a weekly news program covering the next generation of flight, from electric power to vertical lift, uncrewed vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. Archer Gains Part 135 Air Carrier and Operator Certificate. Archer has been given some very good news as of late, now having been granted their operator certificate from the FAA. Even better for them, they've been given the Part 135 Cert II, empowering their plans for air taxi operations in the future once the midnight aircraft is ready to go. Once in full swing, Archer will offer short hop rides aboard their four-passenger EVTOL aircraft. Much like the advent of ride-sharing apps, the industry could represent a tidal shift in the way everyday folk get around. But like any air taxi company, Archer has to ensure they fill all the forms and tick all the boxes before they start booking tickets. There's still a way to go in their development cycle, but things are looking up for the firm. Adam Goldstein, founder and CEO of Archer, said, quote, We are honored to receive the Part 135 Air Carrier and Operator Certificate from the FAA, which is another important stepping stone on the way to commencing commercial air taxi operations with our midnight aircraft. This milestone reflects our team's unwavering dedication to safety and operational excellence as we stand up one of the world's first electric air taxi services for communities across the U.S. with a safe, sustainable, and low noise transportation solution." End quote. After the break, Ag Eagle announces sale to UAE Distributor. I'm currently using the Hartzell Talon, by far the best aerobatic propeller ever come out. I use the Trailblazer. It adds performance to the Super Decathlon and dependability, and it's rugged. Hartzell's been an excellent partner for Whip Air, just in terms of your product support, as well as keeping an eye on the market and developing new products that meet demand. It's helping us all have better performing airplanes. It's such a proud honor to fly behind that propeller. Welcome back. Now for some shorter stories in our next gen minute. Ag Eagle announces sale to UAE distributor. Ag Eagle Aerial Systems has announced a pretty big order for 20 brand new EB Vision full stack systems to a distributor in the United Arab Emirates, all in all worth about $2 million. The deal will include the whole kit and caboodle for operating the EB. The EB sports a large delta wing and upturned wing tips, a single engine and a tightly fared sensor suite to provide 32 times visual zoom and 5 times thermal magnification. It's small, portable and hand launched, taking about 3 minutes to deploy on sorties about 90 minutes. Flight Horizon chosen for Osage Nation's Skyway 36 drone port. Skyway 36 is shaping up to be a handy UAV development location, boasting a 3,000-foot runway a short hop from downtown Tulsa, Oklahoma. The Osage Nation-owned 40-acre industrial park will hopefully be devoted to advanced aerial manufacturing. As a part of Skyway 36, the nation has been on the hunt for traffic management systems, hoping to secure the local airspace and institute some kind of control scheme. They picked Flight Horizon to do the honors, an uncrewed traffic management system created by Vigilant Aerospace. Mesa invests in TriFan 600. XTI Aerospace announced that Mesa Airlines has placed an order for 100 TriFan 600 aircraft, a design they call a, quote, fixed wing vertical lift crossover airplane, end quote, or VLCA, now in development. The order could hit a value of $1 billion in revenue for XTI Aerospace. Along with the order, Mesa Airlines has become an investor with warrants and a minority stake in common stock shares. It's more or less a first for the smaller air carrier who's calling the shot before the crack of the bat. The VLCA should be a winner. 
DJI continues ops near Mount Everest. DJI has shown off some of its mountaineering prowess, making the first delivery tests on Mount Everest. The company joined hands with the Nepalese drone specialist Airlift to complete their trials, making use of the Flycart 30. The little drone is able to haul 33 pounds of payload at a time, even at altitude. The Flycart was able to haul a trio of oxygen bottles and one and a half kilos of other supplies from the Everest Base Camp at 5,300 meters, all the way up to Camp 1 at 6,000 meters. That was it for our Next Gen Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. Harbor Air begins e-plane conversion program with Bel Air Aviation. Harbor Air, an all-seaplane operator in Vancouver, announced that they would be offering a conversion program using some of their single-engine turboprops and Magni X's Magni 650 electric system. They signed a letter of intent with Bel Air Aviation, a sightseeing operator on the east coast of Canada. Under the deal, they plan to buy three e-beaver conversions in a deal that will replace their DHC-2's propulsion system with the Magni X equivalent. The completed e-beavers will grant about 60 to 75 minutes of absolute flight time and payload for up to six passengers, perfectly suited for operators touring the bays of Canada. The e-beaver program will be done by Harbor Air, dipping their toes in the conversion business and paving the way for electric flight across the country's scenic tour business. The deal will see both Bel Air and Harbor Air work on obtaining certification for the e-beavers on wheeled skis, using Bel Air's aircraft and landing gear for necessary flight testing. It's interesting that Bel Air has its own fleet of seaplanes and in-house maintenance know-how, performing modifications and repair to outside clientele. It may be interesting to those running the numbers on their own that both parties are focused on certifying the skied e-beavers first, given the breadth of seaplane operations both operators undergo. After these messages, Starship's fourth test beats expectations. Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 remote pilot certificate, or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. For over 30 years, the Massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new Digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon, www.sportplane.com. Welcome back. Starship's fourth test beats expectations. Starship's fourth flight test was an engineering and visual success, providing a visual feast along much of the 66-minute journey. Starship successfully lifted off at 7.50 a.m. Central from Starbase in Texas and completed a full-duration ascent burn. Starship executed another successful hot stage separation, powering down all but three of Super Heavy's Raptor engines and successfully igniting the six-second stage Raptor engines before separating the vehicle. Following separation, the Super Heavy booster successfully completed its flip maneuver boost back burn to send it towards the splashdown zone and jettison of the hot stage adapter. The booster's flight ended with a landing burn and soft splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. Starship's six second-stage Raptor engines successfully powered the vehicle to space. Starship made a controlled re-entry, successfully making it through the phases of peak heating and max aerodynamic pressure, and demonstrating the ability to control the vehicle using its flaps at hypersonic speeds. Starlink once again enabled real-time telemetry and live high-definition video throughout every phase of entry, with external cameras providing views all the way. Flight 4 ended with Starship igniting its three center Raptor engines and executing the first flip maneuver and landing burn since its suborbital campaign. 
followed by a soft splashdown of the ship in the Indian Ocean. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.